<laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Frivolous and Frugal Knitting Podcast. We are two sisters who share our fondness for knitting, the things that we create, and our love for the knitting community. And we do it with a twist of both the frivolous and the frugal. I am Frivolous Dawn, and in our family's birth order, I am the fourth of eight siblings. Hello there. I am Frugal Miss Penny, and I am the eldest of the eight. And we also have two other very important members of the Frivolous and Frugal team, and that is Faithful Nikki. She is number three in the birth order, and we just love our sister. She is our statistician, cheerleader, encourager, mm -hmm. um, and kind of, no, is she really a taskmaster? No, she keeps us on task. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. She keeps us on task. She tries. And then... <laughs> Well, of course, um, she needs a belt like mom and dad had anyway. And then we have um, the daughter of number seven, fearless Miss Brianna. She is our niece who is just edgy, chic, and a bit bougie. So yeah. it rounds out the team. We are so glad to welcome those of you who are returning viewers. We so appreciate your time, your participation, your comments, your encouragement. And as always, we hope you glean a nugget or two from our fiber, our journeys. Um, yeah. And if you're new, we're so glad you found us. And if you have a chance, drop us a line and let us know how you found us. If it was totally by accident, that's fine. If it was a referral, that's even better. But here's how it works. Dawn and I share what we're doing and the lessons we're learning. So for both our newest viewers and our returning viewers, grab your knitting, your favorite note-taking device, and a sense of humor because you're about to experience episode 80 of Frivolous and Frugal. Take it away, Dawn. Okay, two adjectives never used to describe me, edgy or bougie. <laughs> that should be- Well, I have- <laughs> What did you say? That should be the title for this episode. Edgy and bougie, dot, 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 not. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the one who titles every episode. So girl, you've got creative liberty and permission to do so. <laughs> All right. Well, what is that around your neck? Because I'm sure you want to get it off. I do. As a matter of fact, if you see my hair falling as I'm speaking, it's because, <laughs> it's because I'm steaming. Um, I am wearing, it's one of my go-tos as Dawn and I've talked about before. It is the Sand Shawl Golden Sand by Hohe Locatelli. Just a wonderful gray gradient, fun border. And I knit this out of Knit Circus gradient called shades of gray i don't believe it's even around anymore um on the frugal oh and i knit it with a size six on the frugalometer five dollar signs for fiber and two dollar signs for the pattern okay so, so that was bigger than your wingspan right widthwise on the only thing i know that's bigger than my weight wingspan is my waist i don't know <laughs> let me see <laughs> Oh, you know, it's going to be right there about it because I only have this much left at the oh, edges. I have got to do one of those. So you know what? I literally used this yarn until I ran out because it costs so much. So I, I'm pretty sure that when I played yarn chicken, um, I didn't have any left because I don't have any in my stash. So um, I think you can keep going. Yeah. Just keep adding to make it bigger. Yeah, yeah, nice. What a great, that'd be a nice scrappy project too. Oh, good point. It certainly would. Yeah. So what is around your neck? Because oh. I'm sure you're going to be keeping yours on. Yeah, I tend to be cold. This is Dustland. Um, I just finished it a while ago. Stephen West. It's cool Ooh. here today, so I can still wear it. Um, I'll see if I can show the texture. Uh, just a little bit more. A little bit more what? Uh, closer, maybe it's just having a hard time focusing. Oh, oh, there you go. Now we're starting to see it. It's beautiful. It's stunning. Whew. Yeah, when it's I'm holding it up, piece. when I'm holding it up, I can't see the camera to know if it's focusing. <laughs> um, this is like a hundred plus inches wide, which is why I asked the wingspan question. Um, yes. gosh, that red is just as beautiful as it looks. It's that deep. So it is Plymouth de Villa in the red colorway. There's some numbers associated with that. Knit on a US six, I knit it to pattern. It was part of the uh, Stephen 
my dear Stephen, um, knit along that continues to go. Um, I think I'd have to, I should look just to make sure I'm giving it the right frugalometer. I gave it um, both the yarn and the pattern $3 signs. I think I ended up using like six skeins, seven skeins. These were 50 gram skeins, but what a nice oh, yeah. squishy DK. Um, and if you're knitting any of the dust land patterns, the hat, the shawl, the sweater, I did not see clear stitch definition in the pattern till blocking. Um, blocking just made the world of difference um, for this. What is your mannequin sporting today? Oh, good. Um, that was a good tidbit, by the way. Um, my mannequin is sporting. <laughs> it just left my head. Quicksilver by Melanie Berg. Because um, that's not what I call it on my pattern page. I call it the falcon shawl. Um, but it is Quicksilver by Melanie Berg because these are the school colors. I knitted in Malabrigo sock and Heritage sock. Um, and on a size six, I will tell you that I wear it every time I do a recruiting event or um, a school related event. So it gets quite a bit of attention. It's great. It's asymmetrical. On the frugalometer, I gave both the pattern and the yarns $2 signs. Yeah. And if I can just share, I'm doing double dipping. I realized I don't have a picture of it in my Ravelry. So I thought I'm going to put it here and then snap a picture after the podcast. That's a great idea. That's, I cannot believe I have not knit that one either. Well, I actually followed the pattern and I like it. It's got that open weave yep. that um, you see like in brickless and pearless. I really like that yep. twisted, broken. I don't know what it is, but I really like that. There's yeah. something about simple stripes too. That I just think it's striking. Yes. And my mannequin is wearing um, Ameliana, and that is a pattern by Lisa Hannes. I think I did it back in 2019. Um, it was yarn I purchased from Yarn Carnival. They're a Texas-based indie dyer, but she was showing at um, the Ann Bud. Mm. I wonder if I can get a better color because it's looking black on there, isn't it? It is. It is. Teal. Isn't it? Is it a deep purple? Yeah, deep teal. De oh, deep teal. Oh yeah. We were not getting that look. Okay. Come on in. I'll come in slow so the camera can adjust. Yeah. Uh, I'm not seeing the teal sis. You're looks seeing more. Oh, there's a little better. Yes. I can see it now. That's a little truer. And then yeah. I'm going to see if I can slowly move over to the, what appears to be a solid. It is lightly, lightly speckled with a little bit of that teal. Look at you. Great selection and choice. And um, yeah, and it was one of those where they weren't selling it as a kit, but I saw this deep color. I, there's just something really, I don't know, is the term complex when you see so many different colors in there. I asked her which of her um, lighter colors would be a good match. I believe on Ravelry, that, that base, um, Yarn Carnival High Wire Three Ply has now been discontinued. I, if I had to guess, it's been replaced with another something similar. So um, that was knit on a US six and seven. I followed the pattern as written. Two dollar signs on the frugalometer for the pattern. That's an indie dyed yarn, so I called it a three on the frugalometer. So one of my favorites. Yeah, it just looks nice. Like if you throw it over a jean jacket, or if you're just wearing like a, a white turtleneck or an ivory, something like that. It's just nice. It's not super big for what I would generally go for, but the color is just spectacular. And I love Lisa Hans. I think it's Hans. I always say Hannes, but I think it's Hans. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Super. So what is on your needles that you're working on? Well, you know, I'm still trying to be as monogamous as possible. And um, I picked up a UFO because I completed a project um, this week between episodes and so I picked up one I started, I think back in, I, I, it had to have been somewhere around 2007, 2008, <laughs> 2000, I don't know, I can't remember. Um, but anyway, it is a Debbie Pl Bliss pattern and it is the cover sweater of her Baby Cash Merino book. Oh, look at that. Look at that little bolero, okay? So I'm going to have two things that I've learned and I'm going to share that with everyone. 
Number one, please don't make the same mistake I did. I did not read all the pattern comments and notes in Ravelry about this pattern. Oh. I should have done that before I cast it on. I didn't. I saw this on the book. The book was on sale. Um, oh, maybe not. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, I bought it because I thought there were several patterns I really liked in here. So anyway, long story short, I've put it in hibernation for 10 years, 15 years for a reason. I cannot understand the way she writes the pattern. And I had the hardest time with the shawl collar because she writes it as an applied border. Oh, really? Yes. Now, not just me, but others have found that very difficult couldn't get it to look nice aesthetically. So I thought it was my poor pickup skills and the fact that I didn't understand the border, but I took some time this week to go back and review comments. And those who put comments all mentioned that. So it's not just me. I just couldn't figure out how to do it. So what I did is I went back to a pattern I already owned and it is called the Gramps pattern by Tin Can Knits. Yeah. And I, um, I've knit this before several times. So it's pretty crinkly because I think I've knit it three or four times for little ones. See that cute little sweater. Look at Tim. I know he's a cutie too. Anyway, I'm going to use the shawl collar for that. So I'm picking up the stitches rather than an applied border and I'm going to try it. So maybe in the next episode, I'll be asked, I'll be able to tell you whether I completed the garment or not. If I don't like the way this looks, I'm frogging the whole thing. And I'll reuse the yarn some way. I think in your Ravelry project page, you can add a second pattern. I did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then put that in your notes, kind of what you're doing. So in case anybody else looks. Yeah, that's a good idea. So right now I'm knitting it in LRA Baby Cotton because um, I want to give it for, to someone who's having a baby in the summer. So it will be just a cute little bolero. I don't know. I don't even know what you call it. It's a bolero vest. Isn't that what we used to call it? I think so. Back in the seventies, we sported those too, boy. We, we, we rocked them. Yeah, we did. And um, on the frugalometer, uh, now that I really saw the price on the book, I'm going to change fiber <laughs> one, $1 sign and the pattern. I'm saying $4 signs. You radical. Now, could we see the actual Bolero? Because you haven't showed it. Oh, uh, yeah, but it's <laughs> not really pretty. All right. So, and a lot of piecing for a baby garment. I'm not used to that. And you know, I knit baby sweaters. So here is the front of the vest. Cute. And you can see where I'm picking up stitches all around the front. And here is the back. So I'm in the process of picking all those up and then I have the sleeves. I will go back and attach the sleeves. They have a little garter stitch border if I keep it. If I don't, um, yeah, I'm gonna frog it. But I like this peony color. I just think it's a fun color. So, what's, yeah. what's the yarn? Ella Ray Baby Cotton. Oh, did you say that? I think you did. Cause I, I had in my head, Debbie Bliss Cash Merino. Oh, that was what I did. Um, our grandson's cardigan in light blue. Gotcha. And I have some of that left over, but for the record, not real practical for children. Yeah. Yeah. Fun to work with. Absolutely. It was delightful, but where was my head and not thinking at all about his mama and his daddy who were going to have to wash that thing. So yeah. And wash it. Yeah. So what's on your needles? What are you working well, on? Actually, just so you know, this isn't what's in the show notes. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> I started another um, muscle burrow hat by Yazolda Tig. This is yarn that I saw somebody on Instagram using for this hat. It is by Gage Dye Works. And um, it's just going to be a beautiful color change. And let me see if I can show you the ball because it looks so pretty, doesn't it? All kicked up. Oh, look at that. Yes, so it 100 does. Grams, I bought it on gagedieworks.com. Um, I'll have the colorway um, put in my project page. So I use a US3 um, 
I'm just going to knit till I use most of the yarn and then we'll start the decreases. She updated her pattern. And one of the things that you can download, and I want to try this, is a worksheet that when you put in your gauge um, and how much yarn you have after you've done the initial increases, she'll calculate how long you can make the body of the hat before you start your decreases. So, you know, if you have that skein of yarn that you don't have the ball band anymore. So after I did the increases, I had 98.5 grams left. So this had to be more than 100 gram skein to start with. I did not do it initially, but I'm going to try it just to see because you might as well use every little bit, right? Absolutely. And kudos to Miss Yasolda. Yeah. Because what a nice feature to add to a pattern. I think that makes it much more utilitarian. And when she, uh, thank you. Yeah, and when she did her update, I appreciated that it was an update that we didn't need to buy another pattern. But she Absolutely. also added the finer gauges. So if you're using like a lace weight or a mohair, now that's still in my plan. Can you imagine a muscle burg with a muscle burrow with um, mohair? Oh, but anyway, <laughs> that's pretty brainless. So I can sit here and knit on it while we are. Um, podcast. And that will be truly um, reversible, won't it? Yeah. With yeah. different colors. Yeah. And then um, some other things I want to try. I think Miss Ellen, who joins our Tuesday night Zooms, was picking a yarn where she did one third of the hat just in the stockinette. Okay. The middle third, she was going to do one by one ribbing and then go back to stockinette. So when you put the hat on and flipped, the brim would be ribbed. I like I that. That, that was, was genius. Yeah, I think that is brilliant. And um, somebody, she found somebody's show notes um, or project page notes, not show notes, project page notes on Ravelry that gave the details. So um, yeah, yeah. I just think these are one of those patterns. Like some people have socks on the go all the time mm -hmm. for me right now. Um, and then, this is what I use on the exercise bike. So you can judge how often I'm on the bike <laughs> <laughs> or not on the bike. As maybe. Um, no so. judgment here, sister. <laughs> oh, too fun. Now, um, you have nothing else on the needles? Because did you finish your other um, one? Yeah, I finished what um, I, I don't think I um, cast on the color shift last episode, did I? No, so you're going to have that as a COFO when it's time, right? It is, but that's it. Because remember, I'm a monogamous yes, girl now. I am whatever the opposite. I'm anti-monogamous. <laughs> okay. So just a couple of updates on what I've been working on. I did um, just about, I just started the border for this month's Celtic Quilt 4. That's a pattern by Louise O'Neill or Ooh, Impeccable Knits. Wand on. Um, I like it. Interesting, you can see different widths of cables. And I've never done that before. So this is like a three by two cable where the rest of them are two by two. So I found that interesting. Um, yeah, a 12 row border. So I literally have just done, I think three rows. I have till the end of the month, which is a whole four more days. So <laughs> um, this started um, in September. So are we about the two thirds mark? Um, this is a uh, Plymouth Encore in the dark gray. I'm doing half dark gray, half light gray, and I'm on a U.S. size seven. Um, and I have two of them connected now, so I'm doing the two circular. I like it. I do too. Very nice. Yeah. And then you, can you still see my issues every once in a while? Do you see the hole here? Yeah, but Dawn, I think that comes with cable. And again, once you wash it, things yeah. are going to tighten up and shift. I'm going to yeah. see what the block does with that. Because if not, I can go in from behind, of course, and um, fix it. And I have to chuckle. It's pretty intense cable. Do you see how stiff it is? Yeah, so it's a, it's a pretty thick. Um, uh, here's my update on the asymmetric shawl. It's a pattern by Georgia Farrell. She's a Rowan it's designer. I'm holding two strands of mohair in two different colors. So um, it's just three chunks. So you'll see yeah. the, what do you call this? Like a citron green and a light gray, and then that green and the dark gray. Now I'm on the final section, which are the two grays. It literally is a very simple asymmetric. I have 12 more repeats before I'm done. I will just use it till I'm about out of yarn. The yarn is Rowan Kid Silk Haze. 
This is the exact colorways that are in the book. It is a shop model for um, the silver thimble yarn and quilt in Green Bay, Wisconsin. All right, cool. you, you need to do an all mohair project. Holding two strands of mohair together has been delightful. Um, it has not been an issue at all. Um, oh gosh, I just have to do more mohair. <laughs> yeah. Now some details. I literally am following the pattern. I'm on a US six. Um, you needed three skeins of kids okays in each of the colorways. The only way to get the pattern right now is to buy Rowan magazine um, number 70. So um, you know, you know my struggle on that because it's a very simple pattern for a $30 book. But if you're gonna buy or you do multiple projects in the book, that's where you get the bang for the buck. Um, and I'm gonna have to go probably four or five on the yarn. A kid's okay is nine skeins of it, um, makes this a fairly. And that, those are 25 gram skeins, so yeah. Yeah, but aren't there like 400 yards in a 25 gram skein of mohair? You know, if I had the uh, ball bands, but what'd I do with them? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I'm just guessing, because it seems like, I just wasn't knitting no mohair. I was knitting lace and it seemed like it was the skein that never yeah. ended. And the only time I have trouble with yarn management and it's going to happen here pretty soon. You see where I'm about done with my lighter grays? As you get toward the end of the skein, it seems like there's a little more tangle, but um, I keep these in um, apart when I'm knitting so that the two don't. Oh, That's mohair. a good idea. Oof, oof. <laughs> I don't know why I continue. What All other right. four projects are on your needles? <laughs> so the Upepe. <laughs> uh, again, that's how I'm going to pronounce it. It's a pattern that was part of our advent at the Silver Thimble. I was hoping to be done, but I am not. I'm on this brown section and I have two small sections after that. And I'm over 400 stitches now. And this is a finger, a light fingering weight yarn. So it is really taken forever. Could I rename it the shawl that never ends? Um, you, you may, but you would have to sing the song that goes with it. <laughs> it's beautiful. You can see the textures on camera when I'm working at it a little harder for me to see the texture because there is alpaca in the yarn and it makes it fluffy. But the yarns that I'm using for this are Juniper Moon Farm Harriet Fine and then a Queensland Llama Lace on a US four. Now I think the pattern calls for a four. A lot of the ladies at the shop dropped down to a three. I am very happy. And I may have purchased a couple more skeins of this. That is just a delightful, I think it'd make a beautiful cowl. Yeah. Um, yeah, so. Very nice. So hopefully that'll be off the needle soon. This is a small shawl for me. It's going to barely go wingspan. Um, I will torture it, of course, when I um, finish it. And I am not making it any bigger than the pattern calls for. <laughs> I, hope, I hope for it to be done in this millennia, right? It's one of those. Yeah. Hey, if you switch to monogamy, that could happen. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Now, another shawl, do you, you guys ever get to a project where you like it, but now it's time for it to be done? I do. That's where I am with all my projects right now. It's like, I, I wish my knitting superpower was I could knit in my sleep because I could get up in the morning and these could be done. I'll gladly block them, but <laughs> <laughs> this is a very unique name. This is the number 29 flowery shawl. Um, and... It is beautiful. Oh, Dawn. All German short rows. I'm using two different Zauerball edition six, which is DK. I just um, starting my third. There's four and a half repeats. I'm just starting the third repeat. And that is. Um, That's beautiful. Yeah, this purpley black is amazing. Now, what I was sharing last time is most of the ladies, this is a class I'm taking at the Silver Thimble mm -hmm. in uh, Green Bay. Most of them did their dark color for the flower petals and the light color for these wedges. I never once thought about that. I don't know why I did this combination. I like it, but I really like I theirs. I like theirs as well. Um, I still am using lots of stitch markers. I was hoping that it would become fairly um, intuitive, um, but 
Um, I'm still using them to keep track of the short rows. And then if I get distracted, I know where I'm at. Mm -hmm. Now, for anybody that I could tease to join us, July 1, some of us are casting on Papillon, the butterfly shawl that is all short rows. So this is the uh, warm up for that. So <laughs> will this be done by the next podcast? Probably not. I need 23 of these leaves and wedges. And I think I'm just at about 14. So oh, wow. I try to do either one leaf or one wedge a day. Well, that's good. If anybody wants to do it, uh, contact me. I'll give you some little cheat uh, cheater hints that just help the pattern is um, not translated well into English. There's just some missing things that I think I can share with you that our instructor shared with us. And I'm sure if I ask her permission, she would let me share. Oh, that's kind of you. Um, the last um, update is the UI by Olga Jean. Or E-I-E-I-O, as we I, look at it. E-I-E-I-O, but you told me not to say that. So. <laughs> E-I-E-I-O. Oh, well, do as I say, not as I do. You guys, this is as stunning as it looks. Look at that. That is gorgeous. Well, oh, this is where I was last time. So I guess I did make some progress. Oh, yes. Let me see if I can get the camera to show the texture. Um, oh, right there. Don't move. I'll let you know when you can move. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow the texture now i'm starting to get the hang of this although i still if i'm not paying attention i switch colors um incorrectly but again this is a paid for pattern on uh ravelry i'm using wolf folk tav dk um and it took me three times to get it right but it is right <laughs> the colors are right oh i love it I love it. Um, several of the people on tuesday night zoom are doing it too one's in red black and white that is stunning Several of them are in these colors and uh, Miss Amy hand dyed her yarn um, in black, white, and gray. So that is nice. Um, I'm using a US six. I called the pattern three on the frugalometer and I'm calling the yarn five and not five, well, five for several reasons. Don't order three times before you get it right. <laughs> yeah, nice yarn. I'm sure I'll use the other ones that I bought. So 14 repeats, I'm on repeat three. Oh. So I have a ways to go. This goes 102 or 104 inches. So it will not Just be, what you like. It will not be done in the near future. Is that fair to say? Hmm. Yeah, I think it's fair to say. So those are currently what is on my needles. So Very what's pretty. off your needles, Miss Penny? Well, I'm late to the party, but I did get to the party. And that is with the color oh, shift. I so I'll just this. start right here. I knit the lace weight version. This is a pattern by um, Karina. I believe it is. Um, Karina Spencer, I believe. I and so. I just knit the, the pattern yeah. as written. Now, um, it is the length the pattern calls for. 18 inches, I have oodles of lace yarn left. So I'm going to cast on another one and use some lace that I have in stash until I get rid of the lace, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, and, and I liked it. I enjoyed it. It's very uh, mindless, very lightweight. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm using Malabrigo lace. It's a hundred percent uh, wool merino in four different colorways. The lightest gray is called pearl. Then there is um, uh, kind of like a, a blend and it's corenta. Then the jewel blue and then the hollyhock. And I knit it on sizes four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I bound off with a size nine. And I did do the tubular cast on. You so, did? Did you like yeah. it? Yeah, I've done it before. Oh, yeah, I've done, done it. tubular cast ons before. I like them because if you take a look at the edge, now remember I haven't blocked it. I don't know if you can see, yeah. it just has a dimensional cast on that's just in, in fabric. I love it. I've got to do that. So yeah. Yours is the first one I've seen in lace. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. I don't have much lace in my stash, but you know, um, depending on who you give it to and where they live, 
for those people living in warmer climates, lace weight makes perfect sense. And I still think that is the most worn item I've ever made is my color shift. I just throw it on when I'm cold or need a little bit. So again, I think a dozen of those would be great. Mm -hmm. How do you? I uh, think it's going to be my Christmas gift for all the daughter-in-laws this mm -hmm. year. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And will yeah. you do them all in lace weight? Uh, no, I don't think because we only have one who lives in the South, not mm -hmm. quite yet the daughter-in-law, but will soon be. And um, the rest of them live up here in the North. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do, Dawn. I haven't thought that far ahead because since I'm monogamous, I'm trying to complete a new project, finish a UFO, complete a new project, finish a UFO. So I'm not thinking, you know, far in advance. What a novel thought. <laughs> No, <laughs> I have uh, very few things up my needles. Um, so here is my last month salty quilt. You'll see it's in the lighter gray. Ooh, now this is yeah. block 17 inches square per dimension. I use those makeshift um, try on tubing. I buy pony, la pony lace tubing at the big box stores. Mm -hmm. But um, it seems like one month there's more open space, the next month heavily cabled. So I'm looking forward to this being done. Why do I think we've done six? So there's three more to do. And then we start the process of joining them. Um, again, Celtic Quilt 4 by Louise O'Neill. It's a mystery. Um, the first of every month, the new pattern comes out. And it's fun again on the Tuesday night Zoom. I bet there's six or eight people doing it and to see the different colors, the different borders. Some people just do the same border like I do, the same color. Some people are doing opposing colors and that's fun. Ooh. This is the border I'm tempted to add to my building blocks. But if you look yeah. back at her other mystery quilts, each one of them has a different border. So I think I'll look at all of those before I decide which one to do. And then I, oh, so I should probably give all the details on that again. Um, it well, would have been- You kind of did. I did, yeah. Well, except what are you knitting it on? What size? Size seven. Size, okay, there you go. Yeah, so Plymouth Encore, mm -hmm. nice workhorse yarn. Okay, so this is a pattern by me. <laughs> <laughs> by Frivolous Dawn, the designer. Yeah, okay, and so- <laughs> A frivolous price. No, <laughs> so I teach beginning knitting. The last beginning knitting class um, I taught, there was a, an amazing mother-daughter combination that took the class and they want to continue in their knitting journey. So they would like to knit in the round. So we chatted. I showed them some examples of simple in the round knitting and they wanted bigger yarn, bigger needles since it's new. And these are their favorite colors. So and they're not Ohio State fans, I don't think. Well, they could be. So I literally will write this pattern up if anybody is interested. Um, I just cast it on um, on a US 7. This is Haiku, sim simply worsted yarn in the white, red, and gray colorways. Oh, do we dare tell them, Penny? I think this is a great lesson learned, Dawn. So mm -hmm. I think, yes, I think you can present it. So I think it's a nice pattern for just simple color changes. You can see I tried um, the jogless stripe, but it's not quite <laughs> jogless. You guys, I, I hand washed. This is a super wash merino wool. I um, hand washed it using cool water and eucalyptus in the red blood. I was, I was angry, if I'm being honest. So one of the gals at Silver Thimble said that happened to her before, but because this is a super wash, she goes, what do you have to lose? Take it home? Throw it in the washer, throw it in the dryer, and ta-da. So if you look real close, you can see a little bit of bleeding from the red, but that um, wash helped. Now, when I hand, or when it was in the, the wool wash, clear water, and I had a color catcher in there, not a color on the color catcher. So it bled. When I pulled it out, I could see that it bled but the red was soaked up by the white. So the white must not have been saturated. Now, if you read the ball band, which I should do next time, it says in hand washing or machine washing, high contrasting yarns can transfer color. 
So I'm going to send the pictures to Haiku just so they know. Um, if I were to recommend this yarn to my new knitters, I'm just going to tell them this to wash it right away. Do not hand wash it. Just go ahead and throw it in the laundry. Beautiful yarn. It's worsted weight. Um, mm -hmm. I think a simple, and it's just a simple ribbing at the top. Yep. Can I just point out something that I think you probably just inadvertently left out, Dawn? Yeah. That information with the caution about contrasting colors was not on the outside of the ball band. Yeah. It was on the inside of the ball band. It was. And I think that's important because I was never taught as a new knitter to look at the inside of a ball band. That would be like reading the inside of a cereal box, right? I don't read the inside of the cereal box. I read the outside of it. Yeah. And, and had you not asked me what the ball band said, I don't know if I ever would have found it. Right? Well, well, I didn't say what does the inside of the ball band say, no. but yeah. that's a lesson for me too. I mean, I've got to start being more attentive to that. I think a nice, simple project. So I think we'll go from this to maybe their next project being a hat where they can learn decreases. So. Absolutely. I'll have to come up with a brilliant name. Any ideas for brilliant names like simple cowl, simple striped cowl, <laughs> simple frivolous. Okay, anyway, I'm open to suggestions. That is what's off my needles for the last two weeks. Can you believe that? That wasn't much. So oh, welcome to uh, the regular world. The so, world of the ordinaries. So what have you been learning? Um, actually, I didn't put anything down. Um, no, what I learned was you need, I need, I'm just going to say Penny needs to start paying attention to the project pages in Ravelry before I cast on a pattern. I think it prevents me from having to reinvent the wheel. So had I have done that with this little bolero, I would have avoided some of the frustration and the the long-term rumple still skin hibernation and oh yeah go ahead also remind me too because i think i appreciate those comments so i in turn should write comments so yes. i should put in there that 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 bled and what i did to fix it yes i also appreciate people who like when they knit a sweater knit a shawl knit a hat actually wear it on the recipient so I can look at different body shapes, different um, changes that people made. I appreciate that when somebody has altered a pattern. Mm -hmm. And as a new sweater knitter, I found myself really looking at different hemlines, different cuffs, different necklines on different size people. So not only are our patterns becoming more size inclusive, which I appreciate, I also appreciate it when we can see all the different people wearing them. Um, yes. It just kind of helps me understand if I, if that's what I want to proceed with, or if I need to make a change. Mm -hmm. Agreed. So what are you learning? Well, what's behind you is a sable. Oh, I learned something new. And this is also going to be a bit of an honorable mention. Uh, we had a table yesterday at the Black Swamp Spinners Guild Fiber Market. Um, it first time it, they had it in two years, it was held here in, in Bowling Green, Ohio. Um, and while we were there, of course, talking to all sorts of spinners and, and knitters, uh, some of my dear friends from behind the pines in Pemberville, oh. Ohio, were there and we were chatting and they were chatting about giving me a hard time about not buying any yarn for a year. And they're like, not us, we're going to buy yarn. And I'm like, I, the stash is overwhelming. And Miss Susan, you know who you are, said to me, Sable, had you ever heard of this before, Don? I don't sable s-a-b-l-e as the sign indicates about uh over my shoulder stands for stash accumulated beyond life expectancy <laughs> oh, <laughs> so do is. you have a sable stash I do. <laughs> but it's funny Spin. those of us who work with the fibers are no different. We, we have stashes. And so when she told me that, I said, do you mind if I borrow that? So anyway, stash, acquisition. stash accumulated, accumulated or acquired, but yeah. I think accumulated is better because accumulation, you know, denotes the fact that here, it, well, it doesn't, yeah, it's, it's a piling up, right? You're just cultivating and curating a stash. Beyond life expectancy. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Unless I live to be 210. Yeah. Well, you know, what I'm learning is I kind of just thought about it as the snowball effect of knitting. And maybe it's because I'm getting ready to end some major projects. I'm already thinking about what I want to cast on. But this, you know how the snowball, when it goes down the hill, it gets bigger and faster that my brain starts to do the same thing. If let's say I finish three projects in this, these next two weeks in my head, I think I have to cast on three more, if not more. And I have to remember, there's no end to that. That That's not going to end well for me. Um, I, I started the year with no whips. I, I need to keep thinking just to do what I can work on for me. Everybody is different, but okay. I can almost feel that pace picking up of, um, I was watching a podcast yesterday. I paused the podcast to go to their website to buy the kit for the sweater they were showing. I, I don't need another sweater's worth of yarn. I don't need another six patterns because somebody has a half off price right now. I get suckered into, into all of that. And I need to, can you believe I'm gonna say this publicly? I need to show a little self-control once in a while because it doesn't end. It's not going to end. As much as I would love Ravelry to take a three month hiatus and not publish any new patterns, they're not going to. Dyers aren't going to stop dying Stores are not going to stop putting kits together. They're not going to stop having sales. But um, it is definitely your stash acquired beyond life expectancy. Um, I can walk into a yarn shop and lose all control. Um, mm -hmm. So I need to come up with some strategies for me to be more focused and more deliberate in what I'm knitting and what I'm buying. Because anybody who says, do you want to do a knit along? I say, of course. <laughs> right? I just say it because I want to do it. And that uh -huh. just is not even um, doable for the rest of this year, let alone, you know, for the future. So it's the snowball effect of knitting that I need to stop the snowball. Well, this was only only anecdotal, but yesterday um, while we were at the Fiber Festival, I saw only one person walking around with a handwritten note of what she was looking for. Really, only one person. No, that doesn't mean people didn't have their notes in their heads or maybe on their device, on their phone or something. Yeah. But one woman was had her paper out and she was looking. And if the booth didn't have what she was looking for, she kept moving. Wow, wow. Mm -hmm. That is smart because I think, you know, sometimes you have a pattern in mind mm -hmm. that you go into a store looking specifically, but um, I, I, gosh, can I be polar opposite of that almost? I love shop models. So when I go into a knit store and they have a shop model done with all the information on the tag, I can take a picture of the tag and then go look for the yarn. So yes. that, or look for the kit. I sucker that way. So maybe a pre-written list ahead of time would help me curtail my chasing of bright, shiny objects. We tr we did it. We tried it and it worked. Remember yeah, at the did. Wisconsin Knitting Guild we retreat did. we went to? We actually brought the patterns with us, didn't we? We did. We yeah. did. That's so it was reminder. effective. Yes. Okay. I've got to get back to that. Hold me accountable. Okay, well, whew, I have a hard time holding myself accountable, but I'll give it a try. Um, and speaking of giving it a try, I would like to encourage you out there to recommend our podcast to someone. We are itching to have another big giveaway when we hit 3,000 subscribers. So if you can pass along a suggestion, maybe we can get a new subscriber or two. Our next YouTube giveaway will be in episode 82, so stay tuned for that. But we do have a couple giveaways today, so listen carefully. Um, it is time to give away a pattern of your choice for the hashtag finish, fix, flip, or frog it, Cal. And this episode's winner is Alex F plus two, Miss Alexandra. <laughs> Thank you for posting your which way shawl. Would you please contact Dawn to give her the name of a pattern of your choice and she will help you to find it and get it sent to you. Our next drawing in that Cal will be episode 84. 
We have another giveaway next episode in episode 81, and that's going to be for the Fab and Frugal Cal. Remember, there are two threads in Ravelry, one for chatting and discussion, and one exclusively for posting your project, the fiber you used, and the name of the pattern. We choose the winner from the latter uh, thread, so keep that in mind. We are still working since we're recording in March on The Thinking Cap by Libby Johnson. And so if you tune in for the next episode and or our virtual daytime knit along, we will announce our April pattern. And yes. You know, um, on Tuesday night, Zoom, Joanne joined us from New Zealand. She, yeah. she did that thinking cap. Did she? Did I she like it? It was to see it on screen. It was um, just beautiful for lots of reasons. The, the right yarn, the right contrast, beautiful pattern. So that really encouraged me to look at that pattern again. So oh, good. Yeah. Good. Well, that's what we hope. Now, you know, that doesn't always work out, but we hope that people would do that. And, you know, since I'm just sitting right here, I might as well go ahead and tell you that um, the April pattern is going to be Oh Bother by Barbara Benson. Oh. And I'll put that li link in the show notes so okay. that everyone has it. Oh Bother. And that's <laughs> the name of it. Now, I mentioned that we had two giveaways during this episode. And here is our second one. These two winners were selected from the hashtag my dear Stephen West Cal. And our first winner is Elise KT, Miss Elise. Uh, we have seen your dustland in person on Zoom, but thank you for posting that picture in the thread. Contact Dawn because you get to choose a pattern of your choice not to exceed $10. And our second winner in that Cal is Miss Cheryl. Miss Cheryl, your dotted rays is absolutely stunning. Uh, Dawn and I were talking about your color choices. You have an eye for color. So again, thank you for putting a picture of that uh, shawl in. Contact Dawn and you can tell her which pattern you would like her to send to you. So if you're interested or still working on a Stephen West project, please put it in the thread. Our next drawing will be during episode 84. Another thing that's happening and continues to happen in Frivolous and Frugal is our open Zoom knitting nights Tuesdays, 6 to 8, hosted and moderated by Dawn. Um, very relaxed. And would you say... Um, pretty, I guess, um, dialogic. I mean, a lot of dialogue going back, lots of ideas, sharing, just a yeah. very informal time. Absolutely. So that thread, or I'm sorry, that thread contains the link for that Zoom session, and that is posted in Ravelry. If you'd like to join and you're not a part of Ravelry, send on a message and she'll be sure to send that to you. Hmm. As I mentioned before, we do have a March virtual knit together. It will be Saturday, March 12th from 10 to noon, right? right. Dawn, isn't it a daytime? It is. Yep. Okay, I thought so. It'll be from 10 to noon Central Standard Time. It is a little bit more structured. We surely invite everyone to share what's on or off their needles, but we moderate it a bit more closely because it is two hours of nothing but talk about knitting. That's it, just knitting. And um, choose your own level of participation please feel free to join us. The link is posted about an hour before the event. And again, if you're not on Ravelry, email me and I will be sure to email you the link. Um, I'm going to blend, if you will, Dawn, if that's okay with you, an honorable mention with our next announcement. Can I tell you that last weekend, we had the pleasure, the honor, and the absolute enjoyment of spending the day with our dear sisters from Three Ply Podcast. We met up in Chicago and did nothing but sit and knit and chat for eight to 12 hours. I think we stayed a bit longer after they all left. But ladies, I hope you know how much we appreciate you taking time out of your very, very busy schedules 
to join us and to actually meet number eight and his wife. Yes. So um, it was just a delight. We just love you and um, appreciate you more than words can express. And while we were there, some of our discussion was about the mini meetup. If you're interested in a very low profile, non-bougie, non-fancy, super frugal opportunity to gather with other knitters, then we have just the event for you. We are meeting during July 30th and 31st in Hoffman Estates, right outside the western suburb of Chicago for a frivolous and frugal and three-ply get-together for the weekend. And when I say non-bougie, non-fancy <laughs> and frugal, that's exactly what I mean. Um, you, we don't, it's nothing but knitting. We sit around, we ask you to bring snacks. If you want to share snacks, we have a put and take table. Um, and we will actually schedule two things. <laughs> um, one of them is a potiversary because both the three ply and frivolous and frugal will be celebrating an anniversary. And the second thing will be um, a style show, right, Dawn? Show and tell. What is yeah. it called? I, I think I put it on as show and tell, but yeah, kind of like a just stuff you've knit in the past year that you'd like to share. Absolutely. And um yeah, there are no trophies, uh, no ribbons you hang around your neck for this event. Um, probably some heckling, lots of clapping and cheering and encouraging. But if, it, if you're about trying, make, trying to make money, this is not the event for you. Um, anyway, we were able to reserve more rooms because the rooms that the hotel originally reserved for Friday and Saturday night have already filled up. So we have opened more rooms for that. The information you need to make that reservation is in the Ravelry thread. Please look at that and follow the instructions. And they've also offered us a special rate for the Thursday night. Yeah. So we have no formal programming. <laughs> there is no formal programming for the entire weekend, but there's even less for Thursday night. But if you would like to come Thursday night, some of us are going to be there early, probably sitting downstairs in the lobby, knitting, chatting, and it gives you an opportunity to explore local niche shops if you're interested. So as always, please look at the thread first um, to answer your questions because most of them will be answered there. As it gets closer, we are going to ask you to do an RSVP via Survey Monkeys, that such as we did last year, so that we have a better idea, so that we're prepared for the weekend. Did I say anything I should or shouldn't have said, or anything I forgot? The only uh, thing that the Tuesday night group thought would be fun for those attending would to do a similar cast on while we're there. So we've picked the campsite patterns by Alicia Plummer. The campsite, the campsite shawl, Miss Joyce knit um, last year or so, and I just fell in love with hers. That's a free pattern, by the way, on Ravelry. But she also went on to do, I think, eight more patterns using that same motif. So there's a shawl, there's a slancho, swancho, poncho, um, wrap, all kinds of things. But um, I think maybe Saturday morning, whoever's interested, we can just meet in the lobby and do a campsite cast on. Yeah, again, no prizes. No. <laughs> <laughs> we have we'll some door prizes that people have so generously donated to us, but um, it is not bougie by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, yeah. And then Dawn, I think you have an honorable mention. I do. Look at Miss Judy. Nothing but knit, I think, is her Ravelry name. She meets with us on Tuesdays down in Appleton when I can get down there. Look what she knit for me. Oh, Dawn, how sweet. And she did it for every lady in the group. And I think there must be 10 of us. Oh, my goodness. Can you believe that? These are hand-knit, scrappy socks. Oh, my gosh. these! And I didn't want to wear them yet till I showed them. Looks like a German short row or fish lips kiss, maybe, or rat, shadow wrap. Oh, you guys, knitters appreciate this, right? I know how many hours is in this. And Judy, beyond anything I would ever have dreamed. So hoo -hoo, these will get lots of wear. So, Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. And follow her on Instagram or Ravelry because she is doing a beautiful shawl right now for an upcoming wedding. And it's in mohair. 
And actually on the last Saturday night, Knit Together, Miss Joyce helped her with some ideas on where to look for color palettes. And she did that. And uh, she's doing a beautiful, um, kind of like a shoulder wrap, just in case uh -huh. she needs it at the wedding. So um, she's fun to follow. She does lots of socks, but lots of beautiful shawls too. So I'll try to remember to get you that information to put in the show notes. That sounds good. And an episode wouldn't be complete without a what would Nikki say? Yeah. And so this episode, Nikki says to us this, focus on what makes you happy. Life is too short not to. Yeah. If it brings you a smile and warms your heart, it's well worth it. And we couldn't agree more, sis, because we loved having you and Miss Donna join us last weekend. It was so much fun. And if you want to be, if you want, if I, if I am to be honest, that's what makes me happy yes. spending time with you all. So Dawn and I hope that this week, your week is a sweet twist of the frivolous and frugal. And we look forward to seeing you in episode 81. Until then, happy knitting. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.